The second exam is split into two sections. Section A is a mix of theory questions and shorter programming questions that can be answered in many different ways. OCR recommends you spend 50 minutes on Section A. Section B is also a mix of theory questions, but with more complex programming questions too, that may require answers in OCR exam reference language or a programming language only. OCR recommends you spend 40 minutes on Section B. Theory topics here refers to the parts of the specification that are not writing code, such as computational thinking, testing, and IDE tools. In terms of actually writing code, you can generally expect a few short programming questions and several five or six mark programming questions too. The rest of paper two will cover the other topics in the specification. There should not be an overlap of any topics from paper one, such as networks, laws, or the CPU. OCR exam reference language is a type of pseudocode created by OCR that they will use in exams to present code. You need to understand it, but you don't need to write in it if you prefer to write in a language that you've learnt like Python or Java. This isn't a real language and it wouldn't work if typed into a development environment, but you can see here in the example that it is quite similar to Python. Section 3C in the specification document lists all the OCR exam reference language you need to know, and there's more about this later in the video. The first section of paper two focuses on theory topics, but will have some shorter programming questions that can be answered in a range of different methods. If you see write an algorithm, that means you can use any of the accepted formats here, which we'll look at in the next slide. Here are the accepted methods for writing algorithms, unless the question clearly asks you to respond in a specific way. Every algorithm here represents the same problem, entering a number, multiplying it by five, and outputting the result. You can see that Python and OCR exam reference language is similar. Pseudocode is unambiguous code-like statements. Flowcharts have a separate video as you may be asked specifically to create a flowchart for a scenario. Finally, you can respond in bullet points and or natural English statements as long as they are not too vague. Remember to read the wording of the question very carefully. If in doubt, program code like Python should be accepted for every type of algorithm question, including if it asks for pseudocode. Some questions in section B will clearly state they must be answered either in OCR exam reference language or a programming language like Python or Java. Other methods will score no marks. However, some section B questions may allow pseudocode or flowcharts, so it's very important you always read the question carefully. Here is a list taken from section 3C of the specification document of all the code concepts you must be able to understand and write code for potentially in the exam. I recommend to my students that they answer all programming questions in Python, as that's the language I have taught them, unless a question clearly asks for an alternative method such as a flowchart. All of these concepts are covered in both OCR exam reference language and Python in the videos in the 2.2.1 and 2.2.3 sections.